Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the coach. If you have questions for the coach, just leave them in the comments down below. Our question today comes from our friend Sean, who is training in Muay Thai, and he had an experience sparring with a friend of his who is several weight classes above him, much taller, has a superior reach, and a lot more experience, years more experience than Sean has. And they sparred, and Sean got handled a little, a little bit in the sparring session. But afterwards, his sparring partner, this bigger, stronger, reachier, more experienced guy, said, it was because that Sean's emotions betrayed him that he was able to see what he was going to do before it happened. I'm going to read exactly what Sean says right here. He said that my emotions are unstable. He saw through my body language while we sparred, I think. But... I don't feel my emotions were unstable while we sparred. So, my question is, how do I control my emotions? But I never know when my emotions become unstable. It's like my body gesture is showing me that I could not control my emotions. But inside, I don't feel unstable. It's kind of hard to explain, but I hope you understand. Okay, I think I, think I understand. Sure, yeah, the emotional content of your heart or soul, whatever, yeah, that will affect the way you move, for sure. But I think what happened in that sparring session is you got handled by a more experienced fighter who's way bigger than you. When you have more experience with striking, you're going to get a lot more comfortable with feints and fakes and setups so that you can impose your will on the other guy and he won't be able to see it coming quite so easily. But again, when you're starting out, and the first thing that we learn, and the first thing we should learn, is how to attack, how to strike, how to inflict damage, basically. How to throw a punch, how to throw a kick. And then you graduate to levels up of how to set that stuff up so it actually lands. Baby steps, my friend, as I always say, baby steps. But what do emotions have to do with this? Are your emotions betraying you? You ever seen that movie Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee? I watched that as a teenager back when I idolized Bruce Lee so much and I felt like every word coming out of that man's mouth was, was gospel truth as far as martial arts were concerned. And... There's a moment he's training a young man and the young man's doing everything wrong and Bruce slaps him upside the head and he's like, No! Not anger. Emotional content. And I pondered on those words deeply. Emotional content. Okay, you shouldn't fight angry. You should fight with emotional content. Okay, that seems to make sense. And for a long time that seemed to make a lot of sense, right? Because in the, the context of that story, the... Bruce basically said to his student, strike me. The guy got mad, like, ah, came at him. And in that regard, sure, in the movie, his emotions betrayed him because when he got angry, he got sloppy, and, and you could see it coming from a, a mile away. To which Bruce Lee replied, no, no, not anger, emotional content. And we can pontificate all day about what Bruce Lee probably meant by that. But... I have found that when you can find a way to divorce movement from emotional content entirely in the context of fighting, you'll be able to remain in control of your own actions much better than you would otherwise. So are your emotions betraying you? I mean, what are you feeling when you're sparring? What are you thinking when you're sparring? Probably not a lot. We're generally acting or reacting when we are sparring or fighting. Sparring can be fun. I find it a lot of fun. I can spar all day for fun. It's great. And that's a feeling. Is that an emotion? Mm, I don't know. Some guys who really like sparring, you'll see them smile sometimes when they do it. Because it's enjoyable. In the middle of a fight, however, it's a, it's a little different. You see guys reacting instinctively once they get hurt, and it's not fun anymore. 
and they ball up and they run away and they, they start making mistakes. Interesting fact about warfare, especially ancient warfare, warfare before the Industrial Revolution. Back in those days, fatalities were fairly minimal up until one side called retreat, and then they would turn their backs and run away, and the other side would give the order to charge, and that is where the real killing started. When one side gave in to fear and essentially defeated themselves, that is where the fatalities would pile up. And as far as combat sports are concerned, if emotionally we get in that state of retreat, retreat, yeah, that's where we're going to start to lose badly. There's a big difference between strategically moving back or creating an angle in a backward pattern and retreating. Please don't mistake the two. I hear a lot of people say things about, say, Floyd Mayweather, the way he boxes. Oh, he's just running away. No, no, no. That man is strategically moving in a way to bait his opponent to move in so he can catch him on the way in. That's a radically different thing than trying to exit the fight. So, Sean, back to your dilemma. I wouldn't worry about it at all, man. Just keep getting experience. Keep sparring. Don't beat yourself up on the inside thinking, am I feeling too much? You're not a Jedi, man. You know, you know the Jedi code from Star Wars? It's deeply flawed, in my opinion. This idea that we're, the Jedi are supposed to feel no emotions. If you're not familiar, they're this, these space wizards from this sci-fi fantasy um, movie series that a lot of people are angry about right now with the new trilogy. I saw, I saw the last one, by the way. Everybody's asked me, what do you think of the last Star Wars movie, Ramsey? And I thought, well, compared to the one that came before it, it had an acceptable level of aliens and lightsaber fights. And I felt like it was better than the last one. And so I walked out of the movie theater thinking, okay, that wasn't too bad. But then I asked myself, was it really not too bad? Or just, did I just think it was so much better than the last one that by comparison it seemed better? Kind of like with that mo movie Wonder Woman when that first came out. All the DC movies kind of sucked, the live action ones. And then they made one that was pretty good and it just seemed way better. By comparison? Yeah, I'm getting off track here. Let's get back to Sean's concern. So, Sean, you're not a Jedi. You're not this unfeeling space wizard, and you're not meant to be. You're a human being, and we feel emotions for a reason. Our emotions are important. Now, I know I said, if you can divorce your movement from your emotions, then you can have more cognitive control over your actions. But again, in a fight, our cognitive processes are severely limited. We're either acting or we're reacting. And we want to be the person acting. If you feel anger, you feel that for a reason, and you've got to work through that. If you feel happiness, you feel that for a reason, you've got to work through that. But when you're in a fight, what you need to feel, specifically a fist fight, is your fist colliding with the other guy's jaw. And one of the worst emotions, one of the worst emotions you can feel under that context, is feeling bad about doing it. Now, if you're second-guessing your movement, if that's the emotion that's going on is doubt... Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem if you're sparring with a more experienced, bigger, stronger guy with a superior reach, as you were. Maybe you were second-guessing yourself. I guess that's an emotion. Maybe that's what was going on. Maybe that's what your friend was getting at. Maybe he wasn't telling you you need to be a Jedi, young Padawan, and, and not feel anything. 
Maybe he was saying, just don't second guess yourself. Because if you got this bigger, stronger, more experienced guy, and you do not commit to your movement, man, you got to fish or cut bait, my friend. Fish or cut bait. Do or do not. There's a Yoda, Jedi, Star Wars expression for him. Why am I stuck on the Star Wars theme today? Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> this emotion thing. I'm feeling some emotions, guys. <sighs> Sean, don't stress out about it. That's an emotion too, I guess, the, the stress you might feel about this. Don't overthink it. And some of the worst advice you can give somebody is don't, 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 like I just did to you, giving advice in negative imperatives because our mind doesn't process that very well. If all you're hearing is don't, 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 don't. Man, that's a jail cell for your brain. Instead of focusing on what you can't do, instead, always, always ask yourself, what can I do? Somebody asked me an unrelated but yet related question the other day where I gave some advice to somebody and, and he said, I don't remember what the question was, but his answer was, well, what if you're living out on the streets, eating a meal a day, if you're lucky, what do you do in that situation if you have no money, if you have nothing? And my answer was the same. If you focus only on what you can't do, in those circumstances, you're going to starve on the streets, my friend. But you focus on what you can do, what you will do, and what you must do. That's the only way anybody has ever pulled themselves up by the bootstraps. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.